someone sit back down with the blanket, it's, oh, okay, you're done, you can walk away, but the blanket's staying here. Okay, any questions about pairing, the, the process of pairing? Okay, so some of the research that we're doing right now for this, because if anybody's concerned about evidence-based practices, um, we had some clients where I worked in Florida at ECAP, um, the Florida State Early Childhood Autism Program, and then here in Virginia, who um, engaged in a lot of that type of behavior where they wouldn't listen when we would ask them to do stuff. And we've seen dramatic decreases in their um, not listening behavior. One example in particular was a little girl who, um, she was my first experience with this, and she would pretty much refuse to do anything you asked her to do, but she absolutely loved that process of being forced to do the things, um, and she just thought it was hilarious. So what I did one day is I just kind of played around with some things and I realized that if I just ignored her and I engaged with her toys, she pretty soon was like, wait a minute, what the heck's going on here? And she would come over and join me and follow the instructions I presented. But the most dramatic example was a kid um, that I had when I was the clinical um, coordinator at FSU and he, his session data for two hour sessions was like 75% non-compliant. And that was with um, some force prompting, but also some just ignoring the behavior because they had figured out he liked the force prompting. So it wasn't until we added in the motivation, really figuring out what his motivation was and making sure that we were engaging with his preferred items that he started coming back. And within a day, his noncompliance was down to zero. <laughs> so it's really figuring out how to set up the environment to make it so that the child wants to respond. Um, and then right now we're doing the research that I just showed you the videos of that we'll be presenting at a conference in May. 